Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. Good for grounding. I'm recording already. (laughs) Welcome to Openly Spoken, the podcast to help you show up, speak out, and be seen. I'm your host, Celia Antonio, women's empowerment mentor, mindfulness expert, and quantum self-love coach. Every week, you'll hear real and unfiltered stories from me and my guests covering topics around spirituality, self-expression, womanhood, healing, love, relationships, and more. My intention with this podcast is to help sensitive, spiritual, ambitious women fully step into their potential so that you can live a life you love with every cell and every fiber of your being. And I get that it's not easy to fit into a box. So I bring in a variety of topics to feed your multifaceted self. You can find me over on Instagram at self express babe and info on where to find my guests are always going to be in the show notes below. I am so grateful that you're here and I invite you to now set an intention, sit back, relax, and receive what is coming through to you on your headphones right now. Take what resonates, leave out what doesn't, and give yourself time to reflect. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's dive in. Spoken, the podcast to help you show up, speak out, and be seen. I'm your host, Celia Antonio. On today's episode, we have a guest by the name of Phoebe Braku Owusu. She is a licensed marriage and family therapist. Phoebe and I actually connected in 2020 over on Instagram. She has a podcast where she shares immigrant stories, and I really liked that, and I shared my immigrant story with her, and she read it for her podcast. So we've been connected since 2020, so I'm very glad that two years later we get to sit down and have this conversation. I get to meet her virtually and see her face, so this was very lovely to bring this together. I'm so grateful for the internet. (laughs) In this conversation, we talk about self-love and boundaries. Most of the conversation ends up being around setting boundaries and what comes up when we try to set boundaries, what Phoebe has seen come up with her clients around boundaries, and all of that stuff. A little bit more about Phoebe before we dive in. Phoebe was born and raised in Ghana, and she learned the importance of mental health and wellness when she started college. You're going to hear a little bit about her college experience. Phoebe is an award-winning, trauma-trained, licensed marriage and family therapist with a private practice based in Tacoma, Washington. Phoebe is passionate about serving people of color and immigrants. She also hosts a podcast called Emu Stories with Phoebe. I will put that link in the show notes so that you can check that out. And yeah, let's dive into this really beautiful and lovely episode. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, okay. (laughs) All right, so we're recording. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Thank you, Phoebe, for being on the Openly Spoken podcast today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Julia. I really appreciate you. I appreciate your podcast, the work that you're doing, and, you know, having me on here, too. Thank you. This is cool, too, that we're connecting, like, in person for the second, not in person, but, like, kind of in person, since I can see you on video. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, this is, I I guess this is what we can call, you know, in person for now until, you know, things get better for us and we can actually, like, actually feel each other in the same space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's cool that, like, I think we've been connected for, like, two years on Instagram. You know what? Yes, yes. That, that, that sounds about right because I started my account in 2020. So at the very beginning of 2020. Yeah feels so, forever ago yeah I know it feels like so long ago so I'm going to put for for those of you listening I'll put a link to Phoebe's podcast and she does uh she shares immigrant stories and I wrote to her my story and she mm-hmm. wrote that in the podcast so I'll put that link in the show notes yeah. but for people who are just meeting you for the first time let's give a little intro about who you are and what you do absolutely so my name is Phoebe Bravo Usu. I'm an immigrant from Ghana. Uh, by profession, I, you know, by day, I would say I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. So I, I got my degree in marriage and family therapy. So I ended up getting my license in that. And even though my license is in MFT, 
I do a lot of individual work. So I spend a lot of my working day supporting individuals and, and couples who are going through the everyday work stress, family stress, you name it, traumas. A lot of my clients are immigrants like myself mm. who mm -hmm. are trying to figure out their lives away from home. So I, I like to call myself an immigrant therapist who is supporting immigrants as they build a home away from home. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's that's a big part of, of who I am today. Uh, a lot of the, the work that I do and I am based out of the Tacoma area. I just moved my office to a place called University Place. It's right on the outskirts of um of the coma so i yeah i love the work that i do i'm a mom also to to three boys they they take everything that's left out uh, left <laughs> inside of me <laughs> you know outside of work <laughs> yeah so yeah there's, i have my my baby turns one tomorrow and it's Aww. almost unbelievable you know i got i got pregnant during the pandemic so i have a little pandemic baby as they call them Oh. so yeah so that's that's just a little bit about me yeah yeah I love that I love that you help people that can relate to your own background coming mm -hmm. from a different country mm -hmm. I feel like there aren't enough and also with your podcast like I feel like as immigrants there aren't enough voices for us yeah. um, there aren't enough yeah. stories being shared because there's a lot of shame and fear at least like with with me growing up there was a lot of like don't tell anyone where mm -hmm. you're from or your situation because like you could be deported or whatever yeah was happening yeah 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 that, was, yeah. Yeah. that, that is so that. real that is so real very true mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah so we wanted to talk about today a little bit about self-love and investing in yourself and you did mention mm -hmm. that even though you're a marriage and family therapist, you do work with people on the individual level. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that's the perfect thing to bring up of how change and transformation really starts within us and with mm -hmm. how we show up in our families, how we show up in our relationships. Mm -hmm. And from there, mm -hmm. just from that inner change, like so much can shift. Absolutely. Because when, when we take care of ourselves, we can take care of others, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not doing something for, for yourself, if you don't know what it looks like to, to value yourself, protect yourself, take care of yourself, how are you going to do that for others? How are you going to know what it even looks like to do that mm -hmm. for others? You know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's very, very important work. And that's one of the things that I keep reminding my clients of that this world that we live in, it's tough it's crazy, it's, it's all over the place, especially these days, right? Yeah. So we owe it to ourselves to take better care of ourselves, right? We get only one body, mm -hmm. we get only one mind, we get only one spirit, only one soul. We have to protect what we get to have, mm -hmm. you know, the privilege of, of being in these bodies that we find ourselves in. Yeah, mm -hmm. so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very important. And we, we also find ourselves in a society these days that there's a lot of talk about, oh, self-care, self-care. And, you know, it, what does self-care even look like? You know, we don't, yeah. we don't always know what that looks like. And usually those like mainstream things of self-care, it's like face masks or mm -hmm. retail therapy or what else? <laughs> like buying luxury <laughs> items. Uh, Yes, yes. And it's not, yes. and it's like, uh, there's never mentioned like working through limiting beliefs or mm -hmm. healing trauma that you're still carrying around into every future mm -hmm. really, like situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's so important that you, you even bring that up because self-care can also look like setting boundaries. And that's one of the things that I work a lot with my clients on. Because if you're, if you're setting boundaries, you're respecting yourself, you're valuing your time, your resources. And I'm not even talking like monetary or physical resources. I'm talking energy, brain power, right? If you are the one that people go to when they need questions answered, 
when they need airport pickups, when they need, you know, uh, uh, a, a brain to pick, you know, every every now and then they have questions. And and I've been there before, right? I've yeah. been the, the I call myself, you know, the, the encyclopedia and Google for, for my entire family, for example, <laughs> right? Because everybody comes to me. And part of it is also like the role that I play in, in my family. I'm the, I'm the first child, I'm the first daughter. And I was also the first to, to move to America, to immigrate here. So I have years of experience that my family does not have. And, you know, I've learned about the system in ways that they might not be aware of. And I found myself answering everything, you know, from insurance to how to buy a car to credit worthiness, you name it, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the clients that I, I work with are also faced with these kinds of things where they are stretched thin because yeah. they're taking care of everybody and everything and answering all these different questions. And they realize I'm, I'm getting resentful. I don't know what to do. I'm, mm. I'm tired. You know, everybody keeps coming to me and they keep drawing from me. And part of that self-care is being able to put a full stop here. Yeah. Okay. What, what are you going to do about this and how much can you give? Okay. I can give $200 to support the family and I can't give anything more than that. Right. So in many ways, you're honoring yourself, you're honoring your culture, you're honoring everything that you want to. And you're also protecting your pockets too. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 What do you see come up? What do you see that like comes up a lot when clients are setting boundaries for the first time? Fear. Fear. There's a yeah. lot of fear around how, how is this person going to feel? Fear around hurting mm. people too. And thinking that, you know, boundaries are, are meant to hurt people. Because when, when people think about boundaries, a lot of times they, they think about it as very rigid. You know, like, mm. oh, Phoebe, are you, are you trying to tell me that I, I can't, take dinner over to to my cousin's house uh, every every night well no I'm not saying that I'm saying that perhaps you can pick the nights that you take dinner over to them or you can actually use this thing called meal delivery hey how about <laughs> uber eats or that or even contacting like that the actual restaurant because you know let's talk about how these companies are taking away so much money from these you know um, smaller local businesses so you can even reach out to the restaurant yourself right so yeah. but that's kind of that's kind of what what it comes down to people are afraid they're afraid of how people are going to react they're afraid that they're going to lose the relationships and people are going to get mad at them and they're not going to know how to be able to to, um, to handle the emotional outbursts forgetting that the emotional outbursts are not even for them to handle like that's on them if yeah. they have this kind of reaction, then that's on them that has nothing to do with you. And perhaps you need to reassess your investment in this relationship in the <laughs> first place. If you setting a boundary with them is going to threaten the relationship, it doesn't have to be that way. And it doesn't have to be, you know, cut, cut dry. Like it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be a straight line. You know, boundaries yeah. can also be malleable. You know, you could yeah. share a boundary and someone can say, hey, but, you know, have you thought about this and that? Because we all have blinders. And so they might bring up the mm. blinders and something that you haven't considered. And you're like, oh, OK, yeah, I guess I could, you know, rethink this this boundary. And, you know, but also we also know that people know that you know, people know that and they will try to push the envelope a little bit and try to push yeah. against the boundary. Yeah. And then it's up to you to protect that boundary because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we teach people how to treat us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're right. People are going to treat us the way we allow them to treat us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You also brought up a few things there. Like you brought up um how okay, something that you said about like we're afraid how people are going to react or how it's gonna make us feel. I think that's mm -hmm. I can so relate to that because that's also my issue with boundaries. But I also sometimes have a little think about it and I'm like, that's really funny that like we're so worried about hurting other people's feelings that like we hurt ourselves in the process mm -hmm, mm -hmm, by like being mm -hmm. like oh yeah I can come help you move on Saturday at 6 a.m even though I work <laughs> until 10 p.m on Friday night like yeah I'll go I'll come help you, you know? <laughs> I've, I've been there before listen I've I have been there, been too. there before <laughs> <laughs> It's a yeah, little silly yeah. that like we'll be like so worried about others that we mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
we don't treat ourselves that same way. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're, we're yeah. kind of like su subconsciously or subtly saying that like everyone else is more important than me. Yeah. And I mean, think about it this way too, Celia. There, society tells us, especially as women, that everybody else needs to be important. For those who are parents, yeah. your kids have to be important. For those who are partners, your partner has to be important. Mm -hmm. For those in families, oh, your family has to be important. You have to do this. You have to sacrifice yourself and, you know, take care of everybody. And it comes yeah. at our own expense. And it's really sad that we fall into this trap of thinking that we're, our worth is, is really based on how well we take care of other people, too. Yeah. So how could someone listening take like the first step to loving themselves more and to going away from doing everything for everyone else and mm -hmm. develop that deeper connection for themselves? I know there's like a million tips, but <laughs> You're what's, right. what's popping up in your mind? Like what is, what's coming up for you? You know, I think that the first thing is to acknowledge the issue, right? Acknowledging that, for example, I have difficulty in showing myself love, right? Mm -hmm. And being able to embrace that there's work to be done. And just being able to, to sit in that, right? That this is an issue and not trying to make excuses or trying to walk around the issue. Another, another step that, that would follow that is being able to have conversations with, with others around this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And others being people who can support you, like a licensed you know, therapist, you know, like myself, <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and also creating a picture of what that could look like. What would it look like if I woke up tomorrow and I loved myself in its entirety? Mm. I would be waking up on time. I would start my day off with a meditation. I would actually, you know, make time to take a shower and put on my best face, you know, and, and use that, that perfume that's been sitting underneath my 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 sink for a while that you know I've been saving only for special occasions right yeah sometimes it's these little things when it comes to taking care of our bodies moving our bodies right using the right kind of product on our skin right mm. eating the things that would nourish us eating the yeah. things that you know feel good and you know drinking your water and minding your business too <laughs> but no seriously like staying, staying hydrated yeah yeah <laughs> you know hey and minding your business care. is a huge one because if you're not then you're gossiping and that's taking <laughs> gossiping and judgment takes so much of your energy mm -hmm. it, sure, it sure does it sure does but um i i think i think definitely taking care of of the physical body that that you find yourself in is is super important you know that's one really really important step and also starting to imagine what a life of boundaries could look like a, a life with healthy boundaries you know mm -hmm. where do your needs come in here and where do others needs also come in and being able to to draw a line right now it's not a wall it's not a you know sort of brick wall or anything it's just a line of what am I able to offer what would I like others to offer me and mm -hmm. where 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 do we separate the two right how am I able to meet other people's needs yeah and what am I not able to right so a big thing here is being able to think about what your needs are what are the things that could for example make your day better Mm -hmm. right would you would you like for your your roommates to be a little bit more quiet in the morning and not make a whole lot of noise how can you communicate that hey um you know the mornings are, are kind of tough sometimes for me so I would really appreciate it if you didn't start off the day with your reggaeton blasting right <laughs> you can play it in, play it play it in your in your you know headphones or anything like that you don't have to put it on the stereo not all of us have to hear it in the morning okay 
I'm trying to start my day a little bit more quietly and ease into my day. Maybe in the afternoon we can, you know, jam to some reggaeton. Just not at seven in the morning, please. <laughs> you know, exactly. and, and being, right, being, being able to just, just, you know, assess what your needs are and, and clearly communicate what they are. And of course, that is no guarantee that somebody is going to be able to meet your needs. Your roommate might be like, Psh, my headphones are broken or I don't like the headphones. I like it when, you know, the, the room vibrates a little bit. Well, then that's a whole different kind of conversation, right? Yeah. But at least you've tried. At least you've put your, yeah. your needs out there and said, hey, this is what would make my day better. Mm -hmm. right? for that, sometimes, that's definitely a start. Yeah, for sure. Or sometimes what's really difficult is like maybe the roommate will read the text message in a negative way that like yes. you're yelling at them or something <laughs> when you're just <laughs> expressing your needs. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the toughest parts. That And that is so true. And that's why some of these conversations do not need to happen over text message. Oh, yeah. Right? We've sure. gotten so, you know, we've gotten yeah. so used to technology and, and texting and all that. And I'm guilty of it. Listen, uh, my mom lives with us and she'll be in her room. I'll be in my room and we'll be texting each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll be texting each other. And, and you know, maybe sometimes before going to, to sleep, you know, she would text me and be like, oh, what, what time do you start work tomorrow morning? And I was like, oh, I start at nine o'clock. Yeah, like, oh, okay, well, you know, good night. I'm like, good night. Or it could be, you know, she's downstairs and she would text me like, yo, what are we eating for dinner tonight? You know? <laughs> but but certain things get, get lost in there, right? Yeah. And, sure. and text messages are definitely open to interpretation because people are going to interpret it based on the mood that they're in, the kind of day they're having, their past traumas things that yeah. may have been communicated over text messages in the past that shouldn't have and mm -hmm. how you know that may have been harmful there's, there's so many so many so many factors so yeah. if possible i i recommend that we have some of these conversations you know up front um if it means you know just knocking on the door and be like hey blah 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 and i i also want to add that i understand that some of these face-to-face -face conversations are tough yeah. And sometimes we fall into the pattern of texting because it feels safe, safe right? Mm -hmm. That's a protective piece around around it, and and I, and I value that. And there's always time for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you uh, support people through taking that leap to like doing that face to face conversations? Are there like little exercises you give them? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll we'll practice. In, in session mm. you know we'll, okay. we'll, we'll kind of do a role play in session and we'll go through it and another thing that I've been recommending especially for my uh, black and African American women who are very much into shows like Insecure and really um, Insecure and HBO um, and really like you know reson it resonates with them um, especially the, the the character the main character Issa I, I tell them to, to be like Isa, stand in front of the mirror and have that conversation with yourself, right? Just have a dialogue play out, play out what you're wanting to say, practice it in front of the mirror, get your facial expressions down and be like, okay, listen, I know we talked about this last week, but I need you to stop touching my lunch in the fridge. I don't appreciate that, right? Just kind of having it play out in the mirror, seeing how yeah. it feels getting the word out it's almost like practicing for for a play right for a play and yeah. doing that doing that as many times as possible i think we've kind of been as adults we get a little jaded and think that we're supposed to just do things uh, out of the blue or let things just kind of fly and be able mm -hmm. to perform and just do things and we, we we lose that innocence that we have as children when we used to practice things when we used to practice for plays for those of us who were you know who did plays i did a a number of plays kind of growing up <laughs> <laughs> so so you know um that, that's one of the things I feel like we lose but it's still very relevant it's still very helpful for us to practice get the words out form the sentences look in the mirror and and talk to yourself mm -hmm. hype yourself up like you like you know you, you would see Issa doing on Insecure have all those conversations uh, the positive affirmations if you need to and then you get that level of comfort to be able to go have that conversation, mm -hmm. you know. So, so that those those are two two of the big ones that I 
usually go to just kind of doing it in sessions, getting it out there. And even, especially for those who, who deal with anxiety, we talk about what the worst case scenarios are, right? What's the mm. worst thing you think is going to happen here? And then we process it. And I tell them, listen, us talking about this and exploring this worst case scenario, or you giving yourself those like 10 minutes to go through the worst case scenario and everything, if it actually does happen, guess what? You've been here before. So you already have that exposure, right? You've been in the room already where you think that, you know, your, your, your pants are going to fall down to your ankle in front of everybody, right? Then you're going to embarrass yourself. You've been here before. So you, you have, you have, you know, one, one leg in the door already. So yeah. it happens, it happens. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, right? Then that worst case scenario that you thought about was just that, the worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. And you can put it to the side and move on. Mm-hmm. I feel like you read my mind with that question because that's what I was wondering because Mm -hmm. I've practiced stuff in the mirror too and just the like Mm -hmm. leading up to difficult conversations I always have a lot of anxiety (laughs) Mm -hmm. but like Mm -hmm. in the moment it it, it'll be there in the beginning and then it just it passes but Mm -hmm. practicing Mm -hmm. almost makes me feel more nervous Mm -hmm. so yeah Yeah. I feel like you read my mind with that question yeah 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 (laughs) yeah yeah I think I think what part of what makes us nervous is is that we're we're trying to predict the future right Mm. and our our mind is trying to tell us hey this is what is actually going to happen when for many reasons we don't actually know that that's what's going to happen yeah 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 so true Mm -hmm. I'm curious too you mentioned that you mentioned that you have three kids and we're talking Mm -hmm. about self-love and like taking that time for yourself and you said that they take like what's left of you in between <laughs> work and you can, everything else you have going on. So how do you make time yeah. for your own self-love? Yeah, that, that's a very great question. I am going to let you all in on a little secret here. I hide it in my office. You hide it in your office. <laughs> I hide in my office. Oh, you hide in I your office. Will, yeah, I, I will hang out here sometimes if I you know, if I don't have uh, a session, maybe if someone, for example, cancels um, or, you know, doesn't show up. Yeah, I, I just sit in here and I close my eyes. I turn off all the lights. So because of the pandemic, I started working from home a lot more. And so I turned my closet into my my office. And so I'll just turn off the lights and just sit here in the dark. <laughs> right. And sometimes I'll put on, I have this, um, one of my favorite playlists on Spotify is called the Deep Focus um, mm. playlist. And so it's very nice, cool, just breezy music, just instrumentals, no words. And I just listen to it, right? And I take lots of deep breaths. There's times that, you know, I might doze off and those, mm-hmm. those can be a little dangerous, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of the things that I do. But outside, outside of that, it's, it, when it comes to self-care, it's, it's personal for me, right? Mm-hmm. It's work that I'm still doing, right? Mm-hmm. So what that looks like is sometimes, you know, I, I struggle with taking the time when I go to get my nails done. Like, you know, I tell myself, I'm going to do this once a month, where right? I'm going to go get my nails done. And sometimes I forget. So what one thing I've been challenging myself to do is put it on the calendar. Mm-hmm. Because for, for professionals like myself, if you don't put it on the calendar, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So as, as a working mom, putting things on the calendar, I put my kids' appointments on the calendar. I put, you know, everything else on the calendar. Why not my own self-care? Yeah. Because it allows for me to be intentional about it. It's not like a, oh, if I have time today, I'll go mm-hmm. do this. Or if I have time, no. At the beginning of the, um, I think, no, not beginning of the year, maybe the middle of, middle to later of last, later part of last year, I used to go floating. Right. And so I would schedule that. It was something on my calendar and I let my family know. I put it on the calendar downstairs. We have a family calendar downstairs. And so I put it on there that mom's gone mm-hmm. from 3 p.m. on Sundays to go on Sundays. I haven't gone lately because I recently locked my hair and I'm not sure how the salt water is going to do with my my locks. And I love my hair a lot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I haven't I haven't gone yet. But um, I think I think I've gone to a point where I'm a little bit more comfortable and I know what to do with my hair, so I'm going to get back into it. But putting things on the on the schedule, putting things on the calendar, you know, makes makes it happen. You have a reminder that goes with it. You're taking it seriously, right? Yeah. 
So, so that's one of the things that, that helps me going, um, hanging with, with friends when I'm able to, whether online or, or in person. Um, and also like taking myself out for a good meal. I love, I love going out to eat by myself. I really do. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's very nice. It's very calming. I used to be a little bit embarrassed about it when I was, you know, much younger. I used to think people would judge me and think that I was a loner or something like that. And so what if they do? But, yeah. um, but I've gone to that point where I appreciate just sitting at a table by myself or sitting in a booth by myself and not having to, you know, stretch over my, my arms to feed other people whole and telling people to stop spilling stuff and don't throw this at your brother and, you know, don't just give me that, you know, yeah. so that it doesn't yeah. turn into into a mess there. So that's kind of what my, my self-care looks like. And, and, you know, I do a fair share of listening. Um, I do audiobooks every month. I try to do at least one audiobook a month. I just finished um, this month's book and it's only, what, the 19th? Woohoo! Woo. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just finished listening to Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Adichie Ose Adichie. Yeah. So but yeah, so that's that's kind of what my, my self care as a busy working mom looks like too. I love that you mentioned uh that you when you were younger you thought it was weird if people would eat out alone. I could totally mm-hmm. relate to that. But eating mm-hmm. out by yourself is such a vibe, it's awesome. Like Mm-hmm. you could just like you keep yourself company you mm-hmm. Know? Mm-hmm. and also you don't have to do any cleaning afterwards that's my favorite part <laughs> yeah so I cook a lot no at cleaning. home too <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah I've been trying to cook a lot more these days um I kind of fell out of it uh, a little bit because um just in in pregnancy that was one of my aversions I couldn't stand cooking and like standing mm. over the heat of a stove and like smelling mm. all of the different aromas yeah I struggled with it so I kind of fell off that but I've been yeah I've been trying to get into it um these days and I, I love to cook and um yeah. trying to to get creative like last night I made a yesterday not last night yesterday I made a honey sriracha chicken for my family and I just put it in the crock pot right and it just cooked while I was working I came downstairs during one of my breaks and came and shredded the chicken and you know that was it we had food <laughs> Yeah. For, for the evening you know so yeah just trying to being open to trying out new things you know mm-hmm. new recipes new ways of cooking mm-hmm. and just flowing with that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just stayed at an Airbnb when I visited my family and they had uh, mm-hmm. some cookbooks and oh. I took a bunch of pictures I tried mm-hmm. one of the recipes yesterday we made um it was a carrot coconut curry soup it was so good Ooh. yeah it was so Ooh. and it was so easy it just maybe like five ingredients it was so good wow that sounds really good <laughs> that was good I'll send you the recipe that that. if you want it <laughs> yeah oh please please do yeah I, I remember making a carrot soup I think it was some, some months ago I don't remember exactly what but I think it was like a ginger ginger mm-hmm. carrot soup and I remember it being really really good I'm gonna have to find that recipe again probably yeah. on my Pinterest I have so many different pins on my Pinterest mm-hmm. so. yeah Pinterest is good yeah. for recipes. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Going back. Well, I was going to say going back to topic, but I think cooking and eating is totally self-love, but yes, you, know, <laughs> you mentioned something earlier about how you put it on, you put your self-care on a calendar and that you are being like intentional with it by putting it on the calendar. And I think that ties back to how how we were saying earlier about how we are also important, you know, instead of like treating everyone else as, oh, how are they going to react? Treating yourself as important too. Mm -hmm. And um, my mind is losing where I was going with this. (laughs) (laughs) Totally fine. Totally fine. But (laughs) that's the flow of the podcast, I guess. But uh, I, yeah. I, I love that you that you mentioned that because like it's not so I don't it's not selfish for your relationships to pour into you because then the relationships you have are better mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I would rather have like we mentioned earlier about like, oh, yeah, I'll help you move on a Saturday morning, 6 a.m., even though I I worked until 10 p.m. I would rather have a friend come help me that wants to be there instead Mm -hmm. of someone that just said yes to be nice like the energy there is different in how they show up that's true you know and like that is very very true 
we think we're doing our friends and our family and our loved ones a service by burning ourselves out, but we're doing the opposite actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they sense it. People will sense it when we're resentful, when we're, we're doing like how positive things, when we're not into the conversation, because you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're thinking about the work that you have to do. And now you're sitting here at brunch with your with your girls and you know you don't want to be here they're going to say like hey baby are you, are you here like is everything okay I'm like oh yeah mm-hmm, yeah yeah everything's fine but inside you know girl you lie yeah. you are lying yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah and it's frustrating too when you have those people in your life where they're like oh yeah I'm fine and like you know they're not because yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's I'm sure that's extra frustrating for you being a therapist because like for me as a coach like I want to then like coach those family members but <laughs> you can't do that without their consent like they have to want to change you can't force them yeah. to change yeah 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 that and it's so interesting you, you bring that up because I've learned over the years to turn that off as Mm. much as I can right and turning that off for me looks like reminding myself I'm here to be a friend not a therapist I'm here Mm. to be a daughter not a therapist I'm here to be a wife not a therapist there's many times where my my husband will will tell me like stop talking to me like you're talking to your client you know I'm not your client and in in the past it felt it felt kind of hurtful because it 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 seemed almost like condescending you know, mm-hmm. like what you, you, you don't like the job that I do or something like that. But mm-hmm. then I realized that what what he was communicating to me was that I needed to be more present mm-hmm. as as a as a wife, as a partner, right? Yeah. So so yeah, and and at the same time, it can be hard to turn off because it's who we are, right? Yeah. So even as we're talking right now, I'm doing like mm-hmm, yeah, right, because that's that's <laughs> who I am as a person, and that's that's what my clients get to see and you know so so sometimes it's it's mismatched like it's all intertwined in there mm-hmm. and and it can be hard to, to kind of separate right but but I think it takes work and again back to the whole topic of boundaries it takes work for for people like myself to be able to show up in difficult situations and not try to problem solve or not try mm-hmm. to you know take care of things the way that we would in our professional lives it, it, it looks like if, for example, I have a, a brother who is having a hard time with something, just showing up and listening, right? And pointing mm-hmm. him to, or pointing them to to different resources. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need to do all of this, but here is a resource for you. Here is something that you can do. Here is someone that you can talk to, or here's a website for you to read, mm-hmm. right? So that I'm not providing all the answers and, and doing all of these things right because like I said I'm not here to be a therapist I'm here to be a sister I'm here to be a friend yeah right? yeah and sometimes that like isn't like they want us to be the friend or the sister they don't want us to be the therapist so mm-hmm. if we are giving all these things like yeah they probably turn their listening brain off they're like oh, I didn't mm-hmm. ask for this <laughs> <laughs> why is she telling me to do all this it's my life <laughs> right 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 one, one, one of my very very best friends is, is a therapist and um I remember years ago having to to have a conversation with her like hey when, when we're talking about this like I need you to be my friend I need a friend here I don't need a therapist because you know she would go into the so what does it mean to you that blah 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 and you know how are you processing blah 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 and I just remember myself just feeling so frustrated like no my therapist is doing all the stuff I need a th- I need a friend right now to be like girl that sucks or just yeah. be like, listen who are we pulling up on what's up you know like let's 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 be ourselves but I also understand that that self is also the therapist right yeah yeah so Sometimes we just have to learn to turn things off in that way, but it, it can mm-hmm. be tough. It can be tough. And before you were the therapist that you are now, you've shared with me before how I think you told me that you were studying biology as well. Yes, right? yes, yes, yeah. So what was that like? Maybe there's like a little condensed version of like your journey of what you thought you wanted to do in life. And then mm-hmm. when that pivoted and how that led to you now being a therapist. Yeah, I um, 
I can think all the way back to about fifth grade. My mom had these books. One of them was called Every Woman. And I think that my, if anyone who's listening here is Ghanaian, my fellow Ghanaians will, will remember that book because it was like a, it was like called Every Woman, a gynecological guide to life. And it mm-hmm. had all these pictures and talks about womanhood and it talks about sex and all these things. And I was so fascinated as a child. And so I, I was one of those kids who like blossomed very, very early. And so I was learning about all these things and learning about all these things that, you know, were, were happening in my body. Like I hit puberty super early, didn't expect it. And I understood what was happening based on the things that I was reading in this book. And my mom had kept this book, for example. She had a bunch of other ones, but she kept this book hidden. And I found it, you know, because I was a very curious person. And I still am. Like, I will find it and I will yeah. read it, you know? <laughs> so anyway, so so that was where I, like, I, I started having this curiosity about womanhood, what it means to be a woman, like the, the body, anatomy, all this stuff. So I I just thought, huh, like maybe this could be something that I could get into. And I had my first visit to a gynecologist very, very early. So I learned what a gynecologist was. I was like, oh, you work only with women? I'm like, okay, I can do this one day. <laughs> and so so there was that. And um, also growing up, you know, I I had a very welcoming, and I still do, I have a very welcoming personality. And so people have found it easy to talk to me. So people were coming and talking to me about everything, right? I'm, I'm that person that I'll be walking in a store and someone would just come up to me and like just start chatting and telling me about their day and, <laughs> uh, and just you know it's just like yeah people just have that come talk to me face so I had that as, as a child and so I, I always enjoyed listening to people and talking and you know giving advice as much as I could as a you know middle schooler or whatever <laughs> or whatever but I, I was picking up on some of these things that one I was reading in books and two watching on tv and so fast forward to high school, I thought I wanted to be a sex therapist, right? Okay. And, um, you know, thinking back, I think it came from a place of my own trauma, especially mm-hmm. at that age in my life, um, and wanting to make sense of the things that had happened to me and were happening to me. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I thought about that, but I still kept that whole doctor thing in the back of my mind because it felt like that was more um, acceptable, you know, um, because if I said I wanted to talk about sex, like I'll be chastised, and people were like, "Oh, you're a bad girl. You know, you're naughty, and all that stuff." And I'm not, you know, I'm not spoiled. I'm not bad. I just, I'm just curious. Yeah. So, fast forward, moved over to. I immigrated to the U.S. I came as a student, and um, I was, you know, determined to go to medical school and everything. And so I started college at Salem College in Winston Salem, North Carolina, and um, it was hard. College was very, very hard for me. I was trying to adjust to being in a different country, different standards with uh, uh, professors who wanted me to call them by their first name, you know, like Mm. this culture shock, big time culture shock and missing home too. And I I was going through a lot of depression at that time that, you know, I I, I don't think I recognized. And so um, I... I went to declare my major. I was struggling through the sciences. You know, I did all the prereqs for medical school and all that stuff, but I was struggling and I went to declare my major and my, my advisor was like, Phoebe, what are you doing? You're, you're excelling in psychology and you suck at biology. (laughs) He he told me that he looked in the face, bless his heart. Um, He looked in my face and told me that you suck. And I said, well, what am I going to do? Like, how do I he said, yeah, just declare a, a, a psych major, you know, just do that. And to me at that time, it was terrifying because my father was paying for me to go through college. And if I went to him and I told him that I was going to study psychology, it was going to be a problem because that wasn't the plan. Yeah. So, yeah, I, he, my father called shakenly. I tell him about my decision and um, he essentially tells me, like, you're you're wasting my money. Like, what mm-hmm. are you going to do with that? Like, what's the future in that? I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't know yet, but I'm still going to apply for medical school. I applied, I didn't get into a single one. And even my MCAT scores, that in itself was telling because I scored really, really high on like the, the writing and analytical part and the, the science part. I, oh gosh, I failed over there. It was horrible. My score was horrible. It was a very, I had a very peculiar score. So that in <laughs> itself was, was, was telling. And so, yeah, yeah I, I ended up in grad school and um, it was the best time of my life, really. Like, it was the most difficult time of my life. 
in the sense that I had to face my traumas. I had to do my work. I started mm-hmm. therapy myself yeah. at that time. Um, I met some amazing, phenomenal people who are still in my life right now. And it was life changing, seriously. And I think that that, that is what you know, really gave me the foundation to, to be the therapist that, that I am today. So yeah, when you know, medical school, it, it didn't happen. It didn't happen for many reasons. And um, I'm glad it didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because I knew I wanted to be a healer. I knew I wanted to have the freedom to talk about things that people were afraid to talk about and didn't want to talk about. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go there. You know, I've, I've always been one to like push against things. And, you know, that they used to tell me as a child, I talked too much and now I get paid to talk. <laughs> uh, that's, that's amazing that like you were able to listen to that calling of what you were meant to do. Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's still very it's not a far cry from like what you were interested in as a kid you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that (laughs) yeah I get to I get to I get to to do some healing work I, I get to listen to people's you know struggles as they would if they went to a doctor's office I I help them to to see that that you know that there's certain things that are contributing to what is going on with them and I typically have them leaving you know feeling a lot happier and I think it was when my father came to my practice my office one time that you know he came actually a few times he was kind of like my pseudo security and would sit at the at the front and and welcome people in and and you know he even said you know he would see people coming in kind of like looking meh not looking too excited and you know they they would leave and have a different countenance they would leave and yeah smiling and you know yeah. laughing and everything so oh okay you know I guess you were in that you know you didn't waste my money yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so that yeah. in itself that in itself is telling it and I mean I, I know that a lot of immigrants especially African immigrants can, can relate to that kind of going into a field that is not so popular or yeah. so prestigious you know lawyer mm-hmm. doctor you know nurse accountant you know, engineer yeah. that sort of thing and so a lot of people I feel can can relate to that and but at the same time you know there's this shift that is happening because I think a lot of people are starting to see the importance of of mental health Mm -hmm. and and you know really valuing the professionals who have chosen to to make this their their career and their life calling you know yeah so we're in a good place (laughs) so I have some rapid fire questions I like to ask Mm -hmm. towards the end and then we'll share again how to work with you where to find you online okay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right Mm -hmm. let's dive in (laughs) so the first question is what does self-love mean to you self-love means everything to me (laughs) self-love means prioritizing myself I love that (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then uh finish this phrase the way to my heart is food love that (laughs) same here I love food (laughs) yes yes and then when do you feel most alive I feel most alive when I'm working with my clients and I see the progress that they're making and I know that I I had a hand in that yeah oh I love that Mm -hmm. also when you were sharing about how your dad would see people walk walk out like Mm change like it brought back yeah. memories of when I don't have a therapist now but I used to be in therapy a lot and mm-hmm. it just felt so releasing even the sessions where I would like cry about something from my childhood mm-hmm. and then I'd feel mm-hmm. so light afterwards <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 it's amazing yeah. Mm-hmm. and then what is your favorite part about being a woman my favorite part about being a woman is that I am multifaceted, I'm multidimensional, and I can show up how I want to. I love that. Mm-hmm. And where yeah. can our listeners find you online, find out more about you, and learn how they can work with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Um, my my page is CB Bracco LMFT. So P H E B E B R A K O L M F as in Fox, T as in Tango. And my website is the same thing, www.cbbracco.lmft.com. I'm also the CEO, founder and CEO of 253therapy.com. So if you look up 253therapy, um, you'll probably see me on there you know 
acting all professional and all <laughs> put put together, you know, like the, the CEO <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, people still see that like, oh, it's Phoebe. And, you know, we're probably cackling and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's 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 where you can find me. And, you know, my, my podcast is still in the works. We went on hiatus for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's Image Stories with, with Phoebe, and it's on all the podcast platforms like um, Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, and um, Apple Podcasts as well, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. You'll yeah. have to give me yeah. those links yeah. so I could put it in the show notes. Oh, yeah. I sure will. I sure will. Yeah. I sure will. So, thank you so much. This yeah. Is awesome, Phoebe. Thank you. This was nice. Yeah. I, I appreciate I appreciate it. And I, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for. Um, us being able to connect i'm grateful to instagram for for connecting us yeah me too yeah yeah Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Openly Spoken. I know that there's an abundance of content online, so I really appreciate you giving me your ears today. If this episode shifted something for you, please share this with a friend and slash or write us a podcast review if you're listening to this on iTunes so that more people can find this. If anything shifted for you from this episode that you want to have a conversation about, I would love to hear from you. Just send me a DM over on Instagram at self babe, and that is in the show notes. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time.